Hello, everyone. So on this next episode of the Better Product Solutions podcast, bringing you another Tape Coney and Brad Hall, Printed Electronic Solutions Business Unit Director. Brad and I have a great conversation about printed sensors, um, really a lot of the growth drivers, the evolution and of that of that particular product segment and the adoption by consumers, which is which is, of course, triggering a lot of growth in this space. A lot of the benefits to brand owners we talk about as well as um, really introducing Brad as a leader at TapeCon, who's just recently joined TapeCon, and to lead the uh, growth strategy here at TapeCon in this particular space. So sensors, printed electronics, flexible hybrid electronics, uh, portable healthcare wearables, and consumer electronics trends all covered in the podcast. So without further ado, bringing you Brad Hall from TapeCon. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next episode of the Better Product Solutions podcast. We have another Tapeconian on the podcast. I think this is Tapeconian number three or four. I can't remember. Um, But Brad Hall is joining us. Brad's new to Tapecon, fairly new. I'll let Brad introduce himself and how long he's been here or whatever. But he is the Printed Electronic Solutions Business Unit Director who has joined Tapecon. And so we're going to talk about printed sensors, printed electronics, a whole bunch of other stuff. So Brad... Um, the layup introduction. Welcome to TapeCon, first of all. And uh, I guess if you could just introduce yourself, title, and anything else that you want to do as an introduction. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. It's good to be here. Um, I think I'm officially starting month three. Um, so it's it's been great. And uh, again, I, I'm Brad Hall. I've, uh, I've been in the industry a long time, commercial printing labels, uh, d- a lot of data-driven print. And then the last 10 years has been a lot of functional printing. So uh, printed electronics, flexible hybrid electronics, other kinds of applications. Yeah. And sort of like people, it's, it's funny to listen of all the different types of print. Cause of course we've rooted in graphical print and now we've migrated, you know, to functional print. And then some people ask me, are you a 3d printer? And it's like, well, no, not exactly. So there's all these different things, but functional print has been exciting. And I think we're going to obviously focus a lot on that and particularly um, sensors. You know, when you talk about, sensors. I think sensors mean maybe different things to different people in our world. It's printed sensors, things that we can at least print or convert in our production process. And um, I guess when you talk about sensors and I guess what sensors do for a consumer, why is there such a growing interest in sensors? I feel like, you know, from a consumer standpoint, people want sensors to collect data and do a thing, but to collect data and, and add more value to their to their lives or whatever. But where is this growing interest from sensors coming from, do you think? I, I think it's an evolution, right? I think um, data-driven print, you know, has began probably with, with barcodes in a lot of ways. And barcodes kind of evolved into other ways to collect that data. You didn't need line of sight when RFID came along. And um, now we're wanting to collect other kinds of data and, and insights that um, both consumers and businesses can use. Usually it, in, in my uh, experience, it's been one of three things, right? It's either you're trying to prevent some sort of negative outcome. Um, and for a consumer, that can be an injury or a sunburn or a, you know, whatever it might be. Um, or you're trying to enhance performance. And if you, if you only have that piece of data to help you do that, um, so it's, it's those kinds of things, I think. And, uh, and I think we crave data, right? We, we want to know what's happening to our bodies. We want to know what's, what's happening, you know, to our property. So we buy security cameras and we buy motion detectors and things. So, uh, people want to know what's going on. Yeah. And of course the iPhone changed the world, right? It like put this powerful supercomputer in everyone's hand. It's enabling so many things. And it, it's funny too, because it, at work we've been we've been trying to focus on problems based research, and and you know because we can easily go out and start, I'll say, pushing our the capabilities that we have at TapeCon in terms of here's all the things we can do. But it's like without a problem to solve, it's like it's just more noise of all these tech of all this technology, you know. So it's interesting to see some of the problems that that this is actually solving. You know, I mean, we've obviously been focusing a lot on healthcare, stick to skin applications, other types of things like that. But I mean, just the list of problems that that sensors are solving. I mean, what you know, what what do you, what are you seeing with in terms of all the different problems that could be solved and why people 
are moving to a printed sensor to solve those problems. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think I think you know the the gamut of problems that can be solved. I mean, I I look at smart cities, right, that are doing things like structural health monitoring and 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 as as we have aging infrastructure, you know, we we won't, safety is a concern and and uh, and it becomes more difficult to check things remotely uh, and and make that visit and get up on a cherry picker to look at a viaduct or an overpass or a bridge and see is this still in the condition we want it to be in. Well, now we can put sensors in it, and so we can, you know, uh, if they're cloud connected, and we can find out what's happening and and make better decisions. I think about a lot of those things. Um, you know, currently, I think about you know the NBA finals is going on right now. And, and my, uh, my daughter and son-in-law are big Nuggets fans. So I'm kind of a little more into that than I would ordinarily be. But the NBA just in the last few years has really adopted sensors and technology uh, because player injury and being able to understand is, is their coordination and muscle balance right to left, even what it should be. And, and those kinds of things you know they can they can affect training regimens and things to prevent injury. So there's, you know, it it touches us every day. We don't even think about it. I think, and uh, but it's proliferated, and I think it it it's a lot of you know brings a lot of good to society. Yeah, let my most recent thought on you know this proliferation was last night. I was reading about the um, nurse sh- the nurse shortage in nursing homes, and 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 it's a real issue, right? And the, like nationwide and so my first thought went right to you know some of the things we've been talking about with printed sensors for remote patient monitoring and just how many how you can use these printed sensors to do some of the tasks that the nurse you know is doing um to just take that workload off to address that issue so they're solving like real problems but i mean how have how have things evolved i mean obviously it hasn't always been like this you know the phone you know has been around for a while but there's been a lot of i'll say you know, trends or things that have evolved, but where were we, you know, I don't want to say like 20 years ago, cause that's kind of like, who cares 20 years ago, but even in the last five to 10 years, like what, what's been the evolution, how have things changed where it's really starting to proliferate? Well, I think there's a couple of things, you know, one thing you said a moment ago, again, the phone has enabled this communication link, right? So a lot of, I think before a lot of the early sensors had their own communication network and that was costly. And so the phone has has been used as that conduit to get the data from the sensing modality up to the cloud. And so be, because of that efficiency and having everyone having that in their pocket, it's enabled a lot of things, right? So I think of uh, Tile is a great application, right? It's a, it's a gadget that you can put on your belongings, on your suitcase, on your briefcase, on your keys. And if you lose track of those things, you leverage that tile network to help find them. Uh, so that's that's an example. The other thing I think is, and and where we've been, you know, TapeCon has been, uh, you know, uh, looking toward the future is I think I think the flexible circuit and moving away from PCBs and being able to uh, to capture data in a flexible sort of way, particularly on the body. Um, is also compelling, right? Um, there's certain things you can't do with a rigid circuit board. Yeah, I was I was I was looking this morning at just a couple of reports. You know, like printed electronics. You know, 18 percent compounded annual growth rate, 23 billion by 2026, attributed to rising demand in you know energy efficient consumer electronics and portable health care wearables. But then you look at like a printed sensors. That particular category, ten and a half percent Kager, smart packaging, diagnostics, patient monitoring. But I mean, what else is influencing all this stuff? I mean, there's when I think about you know traditional PCBs, these printed circuit boards that are that are rigid, and everything going flex. It's like what what is it about the um, the form factor that we're able to print and convert that's so attractive? That's kind of influencing this to just be such a high at least forecasted growth rate in all these categories yeah well like i say i think i think flex becomes meaningful particularly when you know the the substrate doesn't lend itself to something rigid um the other thing that i think is is influencing it is is technology has sort of caught up in some ways right so uh 
things have been miniaturized so that you can you can sense different things in a, with a much smaller form factor than than previously was the case. I think a lot of the material side of printed electronics has evolved. So now you see uh, conductive layers in clothing and textiles and other kinds of form factors that wasn't possible previously. Stretchable inks, for example, stretchable substrates. Um, and all of those kinds of things are sort of, I feel like, coming together at the right time. And uh, so now you're beginning to have people think about, well, now that I have this capability and I have a way to glean this data, you know, what can I use it for? How can I, how can I improve lives? Yeah, and I also think about on the sustainability front, which no one can ignore nowadays. It's like the the processing required to pr to produce a traditional printed circuit board is kind of a messy process, right? And well, it's a subtractive process, and versus an additive, I'll say, uh, more sustainable additive process like printing. Yeah, absolutely. And who would have thought? I mean, we now have the capability of tape kind of print circuit boards on paper. You know, I I don't think. Anybody envisioned that, you know, 10 years ago, for sure. Right. Yeah. And if the ink sets come along, you know, you're, you're getting to the, hopefully, you know, this is going to evolve. We're going to be into, you know, words like compostable and a lot of the circular type, circular um, economy type stuff in terms of the sustainable set of the material, the sustainable material set. So right. let's shift it to, um, sorry, did you have something to add? No, the only other thing I was going to add is, and I know you and I have had some of these conversations around you know, we, we don't want to proliferate coin cell batteries in the environment with some of these devices. So I think the other interesting thing is there's several projects we're working on right now where, um, you know, we'll, we'll put inductive charging into the device so that we can keep that coin cell alive for a much, much longer period of time. And then the, then the device becomes much more sustainable as well. Yeah. Yeah, the proliferation of consumer portable consumer electronics sounds good, but then it's like, what are you going to do with all this stuff? So absolutely, to be uh, responsible stewards, it's we're, it's good that not only we're talking about, but I know the supply chain's talking about. So I mean, obviously, you know, this podcast is meant to be toward you know the brand owner, you know, that design engineer, product manager that's looking to improve or redesign or launch a new product. So. In this genre, you know, print electronics, flexible sensors, flexible hybrid electronics, all these buzzwords around this ethos, what's in it for them? Like what, what benefits do you see for, you know, a brand owner, an engineer who's kind of scouting this stuff and looking to improve a product? I think, I think there's a number of benefits. I think, I think at the end of the day, nobody really buys sensors for sensor's sake, right? It's, it is those data insights and so when you when you talk about that, I think uh, for a brand owner, oftentimes the conversation begins with, what if we could make your your product smart, right? And so they begin thinking about, well, what is what does that really mean, right? Um, I have a pair of slippers. How can they be smart, right? And so, well, what if we could put an insole in those slippers that could give you some data about an elderly parent and and their gait and how they're walking and are they having trouble or do they have you know, diabetes and potential, you know, neuropathy or foot ulceration that could be detected and, and assessed. Um, so you can you can literally put smart into almost anything. Um, I, I, you know, we're working on another project where uh, somebody's making, you know, uh, fire protection devices smart so that, you know, you you can tell whether they're fully charged and where they're supposed to be so that in the event of a fire, they're there and available and ready to go. I think I think you can put smart in a lot of things and you can think about that context of, you know, how does it ensure that you're 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 ready when something happens or that you can get on the front end of a problem before it becomes larger? Yeah. And I was joking the other day with someone that I was you know, I'm right now. I have two young kids, so I'm monitoring them, but I'm helping to proliferate devices that they'll be monitoring me when I get older. <laughs> so. Well, it can it can go the other way too, because my daughter has a new baby, and uh, literally uh, was just born about ten days ago, and so she took it in. Uh, she took uh, Theo in for, to the uh, pediatrician, and she was kind of upset that she said, "Well, I was I was watching his heart beat beat was very irregular." And the first thing the the doctor asked is, do you have one of those monitors? And she said, yeah. And he goes, he said, 
put it back in the box. New parents get a little <laughs> too close to the data sometimes. So, uh, uh, yeah, too much data insight. Yeah, right? too much data can be bad. Paranoid consumers. No, that's great. And and so I mean, you know, the um, but the, the, I guess it, from a brand owner, from a brand owner perspective, it feels like there's such an opportunity for the brand owner to be more connected with their end customer because with all this data that's that's coming in um you know there's different tiers of of in different channels of of sales and some people th- sell through distributors and some people don't and so just i mean how about that i mean a brand owner being able to really change the relationship with the ultimate end user and how does that how does doesn't that enable a lot of that to happen and it sure it does um and 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 i can think of a lot of examples there but but one of them is just uh just helping that consumer along the way and building that relationship, right? When you when you get a new product, and if it's you know something like a you know water heater for your house or whatever, um, registering that product or letting that brand or owner know who's using my product and how is it being used and are there more efficient ways to use it, and then how can I you know share other products with them, you know. Uh, you buy refrigerators and you have water filters in those refrigerators. And a lot of us don't think about replacing it. Um, but that's a way to kind of remind them and stay in touch and not only address warranty claims and other things like that, but but to build that connection and build value with that consumer so they feel better about the product they've purchased. Um, so I think there's there's lots of opportunities to do that. And then it's it's also, I think, in, in the service industry for like, you know, we, we kind of go back to the life sciences area because we focus there. But, you know, we're working with another company who's building a medication adherence kind of solution, right? And so they're dispensing the right medication to elderly patients that live at home. They don't need assisted living, but they do need help and reminders. And someone would like to make sure that they're taking their meds and when they're taking them at the right time. And so they built a whole solution around that to stay connected. So the caregiver can stay connected to those patients. Mm-hmm. So there's, I mean, there's so many opportunities, I think, to to build and strengthen that relationship that again, if you're, if you're a brand owner and you're not thinking about those kinds of things and how you can make your product smart, you know, you, your competition is. So it's important that, um, you know, you begin to think about, you know, how to make those things happen. Yeah, no. And, and kind of bringing this back to you and what we've been up to, obviously we've, we've made some investments in more, um, not only the printing side of printed electronics, but on the finishing side and actually to make finished devices with, with some, I'll say finishing capabilities brought you in obviously to, to lead on the business unit director level for our now, I guess, a, a, an entire, entire division that we see opportunity in. So what, um, I mean, you know, your education, your experience, background, I mean, what, how does that help you step into this role and I guess have an impact? Yeah, I think, I think again, it's something I've been interested in for a long time. I, I, I enjoy, you know, matching up technology to solve business problems. And I think, um, you know, the ability to not only print, but to, uh, when, when we talk about flexible hybrid electronics, I think there's there's become a realization that printed electronics doesn't mean that all of the components need to be printed, right? We print what makes sense to print and we use IC and we assemble those components that can more cost effectively or or better enable the sensing modality. Uh, we assemble that. So we bring the best of both together, printing what we can and what makes sense and assembling, doing circuit board assembly uh, for surface mount components on a flexible substrate in either a roll to roll or roll to sheet format, whatever is really required to, to build the right solution. And I think that enables all the kinds of things we've been talking about. And, and I think that's what's really exciting is we can kind of take an unbiased view of what are the customer's needs? What are we, tr- what are we building to sort of try to capture those data insights? Um, and sometimes those things are as simple as a colorimetric indicator, right? We we do a lot of that, um, and you can alert someone that something has occurred, right? The temperature's gotten too warm or too cold, or 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 whatever. Alcohol is present, or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. 
And sometimes you build that electronically so that you make an LED blink. Other times you want more data. You want to understand, well, how hot or cold did it get? And when did it get hot or cold? And how long did it stay hot or cold? Well, now we can capture all that data and save it to memory and in the form of a data logger, allow the end user or anyone along that supply chain to be able to scan the device and, and, uh, and collect that data. And then we have cloud connected devices that enable real time sensing so that, you know, you can hopefully see that the train's about to crash before it crashes and do something about it. Yeah. Um, yeah so yeah. And, and, you know, the audience just heard what I call the, the, the good, better, best Brad speech, which I've heard a few times and I, and I like it because it, it's like, yeah, you've come in and you've known that we've, you know, we've been printing, I'll say some less sophisticated, some more sophisticated stuff, but being able to now, see it almost evolve where you can offer that you know good say just a functional print up to up to up to better up to best and the level of sophistication the level of value to the the consumer or the brand owner kind of incrementally improve as the sophistication goes up so i appreciate the good better best speech um so that's pretty much running through the list are there any other projects that you're working on that you want to talk about or is there anything else that you want to add i guess in in the podcast I, I guess offhand, I can't, you know, again, we've got a lot of different really interesting things going on. Um, the one thing I'll make a plug for is we'll be, uh, we'll have a booth at the Semicon coming up in July out on the West Coast. So if anybody is is visiting that show, please be, uh, be sure to come by and see us. Uh, we've got a couple of other events that we'll have on the website here in the coming weeks and uh, Looking forward to getting out and and meeting a lot of folks and seeing if we can uh, partner with them. Yep. Well, obviously, we're going to use this podcast to feature you and get everyone to know you. Um, so that this will be a good good asset to get out there for everyone. So, Brad, um, thanks for being on. I think Tape Coney number three or four. I can't remember, but you're pretty much you know uh, newer, but really exciting uh, topic at the company. Excited to have you on and excited to help us grow this electronic solutions division add a lot of value help out brand owners in the next generation of products so anything else brad to final close or are you good to go i'm good to go really glad to be here steve thank all you all right all right thanks the better products podcast is about educating product teams about new materials and new technologies all in the custom material converting and printed electronic space to help them design and build better products so in this podcast, I'm hoping to give wide-ranging conversations with various people throughout the industry and just bring a lot of good content to the table. So if you're interested in learning more about the industry, materials, processes, how to improve uh, products if you're on a product team, or just general know-how of what the heck is going on in this industry, then subscribe to the podcast and get ready for some more really good episodes as I bring in some great guests. Thanks. Thanks.